Sure, we've done some sweet cooling system upgrades, but there's a whole nother fluid in your engine that can overheat, and that's your engine oil. So if you're driving hard, you're driving on the track, you're living in the desert, or you're turbocharging your Miata, your engine oil can get too hot to do its job. And yeah, all the fluids in your car matter, but your engine oil is at the top of the totem in terms of importance. But how do you even stop your engine oil from overheating? And how do you even know when you need to? Well, today we're gonna answer those questions and more because we're gonna preemptively install this sweet little oil cooler onto this stupid little Miata. Now, if it seems like I'm just filibustering on the whole turbo install, well, it's kind of because I am. Much like you guys, I'm at the mercy of auto parts suppliers and parts aren't in stock. So I'll turbo it as soon as I can. Until then, we're gonna do some upgrades like oil coolers. I'm Zach and this is Money Pit. Let's be cool again? No, that don't work. All right, now before we get into it, let's get a grip on what we're really doing. Now, engine oil, like most fluids, gets thinner as it heats up. So to demonstrate that, I've got a very scientific experiment lined up. Uh, I've got this Valvoline VR1 2050. This is what I run in the RB. And I had this in the freezer, so it's pretty cold. We're gonna put it in this little dropper and see how quickly it passes through that little tiny hole. Then we're gonna do the same thing with the same oil at a much higher temperature. All right, it's not that cold, it's 60 degrees. It's been in the freezer for like 20 minutes. <laughs> but it's cold enough that you can see how slowly it flows. So let's see at what rate it comes out this tip. And now this is some thick engine oil. This is 2050, so it might take a while. And I'm not putting any pressure, I'm not squeezing it. I'm just letting it drip how it wants to drip. Really slow, uh, really slow. Now we're gonna wait for it all to come out, right? Yeah, well that's the only way to know. So we'll time the entire amount and then we can do it again, right? That's right. the only way to make this scientific. All right, now let's stick this in the sun for like 20 minutes and see how it acts after it warms up. Science. You know what? I hope we don't have an oil crisis today. Nice plug, man. Thanks, man. All right, so the sun has got our oil up to a whopping 130 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're only about double in terms of temperature. I think it was 60 degrees before. So 70 degrees more, and you can already see just how much more thin it is. It just is so much more runny and flows so much better or resists flow so much less. And you can see, I mean, clearly that's just coming right out the tip. Uh, hardly any resistance. So you can imagine that as you continue to get hotter, it continues to get thinner. And that's good to a point. There's an operating temperature at which your engine oil should run, and you don't really want it to run colder than that. You don't want your engine oil to be as thick as it was when we started this. That's why you shouldn't beat on your car until your engine oil is up to temperature. Well, at least above like 150 degrees Fahrenheit. So how do you know when you need an oil cooler? What is too hot? Just you gotta look at your situation. I live in Southern California where it is hot. It's basically the desert. I am taking the car to track days. I like to beat on it in the canyons. And we're gonna stick a turbocharger on it, which is gonna add a lot of heat. So for me, an oil cooler obviously makes sense. Things are hot and I'm not helping. But if for you, it really depends on what you got going on, what you got going on in your engine bay, where you live and how you drive. So if your situation checks all of these boxes, yeah, it probably makes sense but if you're looking more like these boxes, probably not so much. Okay, so now that we know what we're up against and we know that we want an oil cooler, what do we do? Well, the boys over at Flying Miata sent us their oil cooler kit for the Miata, and boy, it's sweet. Comes with a nice Cetrab oil cooler. It's basically just a radiator for your oil. The oil goes through this, air can flow through these fins and remove heat from your oil. It's really simple. So to get the oil to the cooler, you have to install this sandwich plate. Basically, it sandwiches where your filter goes and uh, oil will come out and back in these two holes. It's pretty smart. It's got a thermostat so that you're not cooling your oil while it's still too cold. So honestly, this should be a pretty easy install, which I am excited about, especially after all those dashboards. All right, we got the car in the garage. Now I'm gonna lift it up because, well, our oil filter and basically everything we're gonna be working on is under our new intake manifold. So we're gonna be working from underneath pretty much entirely today. 
beautiful. That ain't going nowhere. Hey, I found a nut. Kind of looks important. Well, we'll just put that there for now. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do to get ready to install this thing is put these fitting adapters into our actual oil cooler. Uh, Fly Me Out includes these, and they basically go from the O-ring uh, fitting that the cooler has to an AN fitting for the lines that we're using. Uh, and luckily, our little experiment uh, afforded me a nice little oil dispenser. When you're putting these kind of aluminum fittings together, O-ring fittings, anything of this sort, just a little bit of engine oil or assembly lube will uh, make sure you don't mess up the threads. So these aluminum fittings that we're gonna be using, uh, and anytime you're really working with any AN fittings, they're usually gonna be made out of aluminum. And aluminum, while it's lightweight and good at transferring heat and doing a lot of stuff, it's kind of soft and it's easy to damage. So when you tighten these kind of fittings, you can do a few things. You can get specific AN wrenches that are made out of aluminum. They're anodized, so they're not any harder than the fittings that you're trying to tighten. So these do a pretty good job of not damaging your fittings. You can also just use an old school crescent wrench with a little bit of masking tape on it to try to protect the finish. And it's really, it's not that big of a deal if you damage the finish a little bit, but I mean, these are nice new fittings. You want them to look nice, right? So a little masking tape can go a long way. All right, so we've got our fittings in our cooler. So this thing's pretty much ready to go in the car. Uh, so uh, I guess it's time to get under the car. I'm gonna pull off the old oil filter, probably make a little bit of a mess, and then we can start installing. We can put our sandwich plate on, put our lines on, and mount our cooler. Let's do it. So this thing has a pretty fresh oil change in it. I just changed it probably a couple hundred miles ago. So I'm not gonna do an oil change while we do this, and I'm gonna try to not lose that much oil. We'll see how it goes. So I'm gonna put a little paper towel down and then I'm just gonna hold this cup. Are you ready? <laughs> what? Are you gonna hold the Dixie cup? Yeah, hell yeah, I'm gonna hold a Dixie cup. Ah, damn it. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's all over me. Literally, could not have <laughs> worse. Oh my God. <laughs> My knee. I honestly didn't think it was gonna go that bad. <laughs> I've done that before with success. Let me I see swear. how much you caught in that Dixie cup. Hey, there's still plenty in the filter though, you know? We didn't lose it all. <laughs> okay, now that we've cleaned up our little oil crisis, we can continue. All right, now we need to get our sandwich plate ready to install. All we gotta do is install our fitting adapters into this. Need a little O-ring Johnny here, get a little oil on it. Cool, all right, now the last thing we need to do, get a little oil on our sealing gasket here, help it seal up. Uh, so we're ready to install our sandwich plate here and it's gonna be pretty easy. Basically, this uh, sealing surface goes in place of the old oil filter. So this will just go on, then our little threaded adapter will spin on to the old oil filter threads and then these are gonna be our new oil filter threads. Uh, but without further ado, uh, we're just gonna put this on, thread it into place and I'm gonna leave it a little loose so I can adjust. We wanna get fitment just right. So we're not gonna tighten it up yet. We're just gonna get her on. All right, so now we're ready to mount up our actual oil cooler, and to do that, it should be pretty easy. Uh, Flying Miata includes these brackets. They sandwich in on the front bolts of your power steering rack here. So we'll be able to mount the thing right here. It's gonna look really nice. I hope we don't have any clearance issues, but uh, if we don't, it should be pretty, pretty sweet. Okay, that was pretty easy. Yeah, look at that, that's, uh, that's pretty good. Oh, you know what I need to do? I also need to put oil in this thing. If I left this dry, the engine would end up without oil pressure for just a second, but a second is too long. Uh, now this does use a thermostat, right? So that it's only working when the oil's up to temp. 
but it works on the far end of the system, if that makes sense. So if it needs to fill this whole thing from empty before oil pressure gets to the rest of the engine, the engine will be without oil pressure just for a second, and that's too long. So we're gonna fill this thing most of the way with oil, not brimming, because, well, you saw what kind of mess I can make. All right, she's Phil. Let's see if he can keep all that oil in there. <laughs> I'll sacrifice my body if, if not. Not the precious carpet. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's good. Eat good. All right, so now we've got our cooler mounted. We've got our sandwich plate loosely in place. Now we're gonna fish our lines into place, get everything sorted out, get it all fitted just right so that the lines aren't rubbing on anything and everything's nice and happy. Then we can tighten down the sandwich plate, tighten our lines up, put our filter back on, and that's it. All right, so the lines are attached to the sandwich plate, they're attached to the oil cooler, and they are run in a way that makes me feel warm and fuzzy inside. So I'm gonna put some zip ties on them just to make sure they stay where I've got them, tighten up the sandwich plate, and baby, we're home free. This thing looks awesome. Everywhere you look, there's something cool going on. There's money. <laughs> 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 All right, so before we get this thing back on the ground, we're gonna fire it up so I can easily take a look from underneath, make sure there are no leaks, and then we'll put it on the ground, top off the oil level, and that's it. What a smooth day. Any leaks? Uh -huh. Is that a no? Yeah, it's not great. You got me a little bit, Did I'm I? not gonna lie. No. He had me in the first half. Uh, but the second half's all mine. Looks like this thing's dry, which is sweet. Now granted, I'm gonna wanna check again after driving for a while once the oil thermostat opens and it's really flowing like, uh, like it should. But it's nice to know that things are dry for now. So I'm gonna get off the jack stands, get the oil level topped off, make sure we're all good. And that's it. And we're still right up on there. We're doing good. Man, wow. Would you look at us? What a day it's been. That's a pretty good mod. That's a solid mod in my opinion. Well thought out, high quality, and there was no drama installing it. Ah, damn it! <laughs> so this has just been one of those things where we're future-proofing the car for what we're gonna do. And that's really the way you should modify a car. You should kind of do these things before you need them. If you do an oil cooler after you're overheating your oil, it might be too late. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you had a fun time watching the video. We had a good time making it. As always, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. It helps us out a lot. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Zach Job and follow Donut at Donut Media. I'll see you guys next week. Still not gonna be a turbo.